Hello, my soccer universe. Well, I'm celebrating the end of the week, a very big week for me, uh, with uh, the video that I put out and, you know, also having some success here and there on other fronts too. I'm celebrating it now by actually being able to talk about the Europa League and Europa Conference League action yesterday, where my first thought is that, boy, is the branding kind of unified. They even use the same anthem. Also, welcome. I mean, it was already La Liga review video, but now the Betis jersey is fully in there. So again, back there are Europa League teams. Here we have Conference League teams. I am wearing a Conference League team. I actually watched first the last game in its entirety. Um, enjoyed it largely. I mean, it was not a great game, but you know, new coach simplified approach as he put it which kind of yeah um you know when an assistant coach takes over from the head coach and then comes out and says uh you know uh we did have our uh, disagreements and i actually want to simplify our approach i have a feeling it's a little bit a slight against the former coach who wanted to make it maybe a little bit too complicated um given the success he had with the women team with a very uh complicated playing style but, you know, in a way, he had probably more time to develop. I have no idea. Um, or maybe the... I actually think that the differences in the women's teams are so much bigger that on the men, men's level, even if you have it very complicated and very nicely thought out, maybe it doesn't work. Whatever. The game itself last completely dominated Helsinki uh, for most of the time, especially in the first half. Uh, they found back a more direct weight of goal. I do have to say that, uh, and you know, I always have the feeling that meanwhile, the Austrian league is good enough that teams like we play from Serbia, Scotland, and uh, now Finland, they're maybe not even on par with um, uh, the better teams in the Austrian Bundesliga. So I mean, Hels Helsinki, I think, I don't think they would play up front in the Austrian Bundesliga at all. That's that's the feeling I got coming. Not, not that they're a bad team, but uh, from what I saw, how easy it was, especially in the first half, where probably Lask Schuh should have scored two goals, uh, at least not only the one after a free kick that was uh, parried by the goal, goalkeeper the Marosic uh, puts it in the net for his first goal for Lask. After making those early two errors, he has been benched and now he came on and very happy. And I think this is maybe one th of those things that have to change. Uh, I do have to say, though, that around between the 60th and the 70th minute, you could see, I mean, after Holland had a great chance around 55th, uh, then it kind of got a little bit dicey. Uh, Helsinki could probably have equalized, but then, you know, find substitutions and you put on a newly acquired Harvard, you put on newly acquired quite quite Monshine and the two, I don't want to say can't combine how how place the pass over and Monshine makes a really really nice uh, shot into the corner uh, and makes it two to nil and settles another European win and yes I was very tempted to do an opening montage as I always do for Lask in Europe but I decided no keep it simple this time around uh, you will get I one of the reasons why I like it is because I really think that the Europa League anthem is actually quite a good anthem. I actually really enjoyed it. I find myself whistling at it more than a Champions League anthem, to be honest. It, it, it's a really, really, really catchy melody. So, yeah. Um, all happy, one would think. Uh, the only sour note, I mean, was a, a, a very unnecessary yellow card uh, by Potsman. Throwing away the ball where I don't need, need to do. I hope this doesn't come back to bite us. And of course, the fans not being happy for Lusk playing in pink. I'm wearing pink. I'm getting a little bit annoyed. I mean, uh, they're of course all on a high alarm because of what Salzburg, what was happening to Austria Salzburg way back in the mid 2000s when suddenly Red Bull Bull to go and the purple of Austria Salzburg was wiped out, which was an absolute disgrace. Don't get me wrong. The pink, of course, comes now from supplier BWT and seemingly last season uh, it was that the team sold off two away games to have the pink jersey worn and then they could not wear them because of UEFA so they had to wear them twice at home, which of course got everyone upset. It got me also upset that they played the pink. However, I do not have a problem with the pink jer uh, jerseys per se. I actually see it meanwhile as a point of pride. Let's take this yes i would love a red jersey more i think that would fit be feeling better 
but I have, I have to say when I judge, I see how my girls are drawn to this pink shirt, how many uh, female fans I see wearing a pink Lusk shirt. Just to open it up to that uh, fan base, I think that's that. That, that answers to something that should not be discarded in the whole discussion about the pink jer uh, jer jersey. And up until Hasberg came out with a, a yeah not so bright pink jer a shirt, this was a uniquely Lusk feature that I think we should wear with pride. This is something different. And which team outside of Palermo actually um, really dares, at least in Austria, dares to go out in pink? This is something that I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit annoyed because I'm in the home and the waiters, although I both, I don't really like this season one, but they're all in black and white and then with some red on, there is hardly any other color. Yes, now there's some pink from uh, here, but I, I, I find it a little bit tiresome. Um, I know you don't want to sell to your sponsor, but you know, Give them the third jersey. We had sleeves colored by a sponsor on the home jersey. This was way more offensive, in my opinion. So this was a rant uh, that was actually not belongs not to the conference league. So yeah, um, I saw highlight of every game. They had a nice uh, review show, and I thought I'll just come make a brief sentence on every game of the leagues that I usually cover uh, there. Galatasaray Lazio uh, is most notable. I think Galatasaray won it uh, from what, what I could say uh, this, this year. So, but the goal, I mean, what is Strakosha doing? I mean, it's a weird ball, but then he just has to fist it over the bar and he kind of tries to catch it and throws it into this. is not very, very, very weird. Uh, OM has to consider very late equalizer to uh, lock. Uh, Gervinas Vesta beats Braga 2-1, so that is one. Uh, Leverkusen comes back from a 1-0 de deficit against Ferenc Varus. An absolute crazy game was Betis against Celtic, and it was so crazy that I almost, almost, if Lask wouldn't have won, I would have worn this Betis jersey. Betis in blue at home. Betis in blue at home, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, um, it reminds me a lot of the Milan Celtic game last season, where Celtic had a 2-0 lead. And within, I think, two minutes, Betis could equalize. They took a 4-2 lead and in the second half when Celtic pulled up back an absolute crazy game. So Celtic scores the first two and the last goal and still managed to lose. Weird. West Ham is gifted two goals, but uh, Dinamo Zagreb in the first one was a complete uh, back pass. Horrible. And the second one, I mean, that, that Declan Rice intercepts it almost at the halfway line and runs through gets the goal. Uh, Rapid Vienna, a little bit unlucky, but overall also not too un undeserved. One nil loss uh, against uh, Genk, but um, it was a stoppage time winner. And Rapiders, what they do best is wine, 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 because they have so many games to play. Get me. Get a, get a break. Uh, Lyon actually uh, wins 2 0 at Rangers. I thought that was a, a, a kind of interesting result. Monaco against Sturm just outlasted them. I mean, there were so many Sturm Graz fans in, Mono in Monaco. Uh, and I think at one point I hit the, uh, the post. I mean, I fell asleep on that game uh, late in the first half. Um, but what, what I could see is that Sturm was not their confident uh, self going forward, a little bit too timid. Or maybe Monaco was too good. But I think with a little bit more, um, you know, more Salzburg, more Lask, more Wolfsburg, like, uh, you know, a bit, bit more daring going, going forward. I think Sturm could have gotten something there. So you uh, end up conceding a goal by Dieter um, and Monaco wins 1-0. I think PSV against Real Sociedad, I mean, again, uh, I watched it on a conference and this was a highly entertaining game. I just fell asleep uh, because I was just too, too, too tired. PSV had the lead and Real Sociedad turned around very, very quickly, then 2-2 uh, in the second half. And then both teams have pretty big chances right at the end to win it all. Uh, however, it was not meant to be. Uh, kind of a freak result was Leicester against Napoli. Uh, well, Leicester had a 2-0 lead, but there were basically the two ch chances. Napoli completely dominated in red, by the way. Completely dominated Leicester. Left and right uh, find themselves 2-0 down and you wonder why, how, why, why Victor Osh Oshman, especially the, f the first Napoli goal, that, that com combination and technical ability was really, really special. 
2-2 it ends. Uh, Özil in his first uh, game in Germany since the 2018 World Cup uh, gives Fenerbahce the lead, a, a goal that was marked by offside calls. Frankfurt then um, can equalize, has a few chances, but then Fenerbahce has the biggest one to uh, score uh, by having a penalty that is saved. And then on the rebound they would have uh, scored, but... Uh, Berisha was already in the box, so uh, rightfully it didn't count. So those were the Europa League games. So uh, Conference League, a little bit less. So Union Berlin losing 3-1 to S uh, Slavia. And I was actually surprised that Slavia is in the uh, Conference League. I know first, uh, Feyeno is, is a Dutch team, nil nil at Haifa. Not much more to talk home about that. Uh, but you know, they find themselves 1 0 down. Um, then, even man down, they still can equalize kind of late in the 70th, but then in the last 10 minutes, Slavia scores two goals. Um, we have to welcome Lincoln Red Imps from Gibraltar into uh, the UEFA fa family, however. Pauk, my favorite Greek team, beats them 2 0. Um, also, not too bad. Uh, Spurs find themselves. 1-0 up, then 2-1 down, and very, very late they get an equalizer. Vitesse wins 2-0 at Mura, uh, that is, we talked about Lusk, of course. Uh, Roma against Sofia, 1-0 down, and then really rolling and scoring actually quite some, mostly long-range shot goals, but quite nice, I have to say. And then another 2-2 between Randers and AZ from Alkmaar, so uh, that was also an interesting game. There, uh, I think also similar where uh, Randers had the, uh, no, nah, it was twice at the lead as far as I, re I remember now. Uh, uh, While well, I think that the Europa League matchups are now much more Champions League quality, overall, um, I think there were more goals scored in the Conference League. So that is something uh, to remember it is a whole lot more games to watch and i'm a little bit i mean i have some choice but yesterday i was not happy that on the conference they only did the sturm and the frankfurt groups the sturm group, group, group is fine but i would have like a little bit more choice there uh, i could i could switch over to leicester against napoli but i did this when they ever olympiak was playing against uh antwerp big uh, but you know i would have liked that this is included in, 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 included there uh, so yeah, that's maybe the one thing I think the way it is, uh, you know, uh, the rights that it's uh, it's not as neatly done as the Champions League. And I think this is where I blame UEFA a little bit, but that would be the topic for another video. So yeah, let me know if you watched any action yesterday. As I said, Lask off to winning start, playing Maccabi Tel Aviv next. And yeah, you will get us, the, uh, if it's not out already, by the time you see this, you will have the Statscast video with all the number standings and so on. I will pull it out there and I put the anthems below because I love them so much. Okay, in any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel, see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.